inflation surged to 6.8% in November, okay, yeah. even more than expected, to fastest rate since 1982. Yeah. Federal Reserve is expected to take a very big step towards a rate hike. It's what they're talking about right now. This is a CNBC story. Uh, they're, they're about to announce a dramatic policy shift Wednesday that will clear the way yep. and for the first interest hike rate next year. Markets are anticipating the Fed will speed up the wind down of its bond buying program, changing the end to March in, uh, uh, from June. That would free the central bank to start raising interest rates from zero, and Fed officials are expected to release a new forecast showing two to three interest rate hikes in 2022 and another three to four in 2023. The big wild card for markets is what the Fed says about its balance sheet, which was $4.1 trillion in January. The 2022 before pandemic was swollen to $8.7 trillion. You just mentioned that there is uh, one set of analytics that said that expecting as many as seven mini hikes during the year. No, no, I said that. I you said, said Goldman that? Sachs. Goldman, Goldman yeah. Sachs yeah, is so Goldman Sachs says seven. Isn't that interesting? Well, listen, yesterday was a, a, shock, a shock for the markets, and the, the Fed officials are, are being so aggressive because they, they, they announced that the, the, the median probability is now three rate hikes, according to Fed officials, according to the dot plot, according to the anonymous votes. So a, a, a preponderance of the, 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 the officials on the Federal Reserve Board are now anticipating three rate hikes next year. But as we see, Fed hikes seen starting with yield curve flattest in a generation. It's a wonky thing to discuss, but the reason stocks are up is because stocks are like, they're not going to be able to do it. Because we, we, we've had the difference between the two-year Treasury yield and the 10-year Treasury yield, which is, by the way, what I spent all of 2019 talking about. I spent all of one whole year talking about the damn yield curve. But we've had the difference between the two-year and, and the 10-year yield go from 161, 1. 1.6 percentage points in April at the peak of the stimulus, stimulus checks 3.0, mm -hmm. to where it is today, half of that 80 basis points. So it's been cut in half. So we, it's a record decline. Once that yield curve gets really flat, it tends to say we're going into recession. So the markets yesterday were like, they can, right. they, they can try and raise interest rates all they want. But they cannot raise interest rates if the yield curve is flat or even worse, inverted, because that signals a recession. So try me. Go for it. Hurry up with the taper. Right now, they're on track because they've doubled the size of their the, the reduction in purchases to, from 15 to $30 billion starting in January. So they're on track to finish with the taper, to stop growing the balance sheet by March 15th at the rate that they have announced officially yesterday. So in theory, on the March 17th meeting, two meetings from now, they could launch the first interest rate hike. But let's go back to tax season and the money that people are not getting back in interest in, in, in income tax refunds yeah. and the child tax credit not being paid January the 15th for the first time. And Biden seeming to pull it out of his uh, the, the February the 1st student loan repayment. Let's talk about what the first quarter of this economy is going to look like and whether the Fed's going to be able to do a single yeah. interest rate hike one despite inflation, which there's a word for it. It's called stagflation. Yeah. And it's the worst of all possible situations because your growth is slowing while prices are still rising. And it's the hardest to break. If and you, it is the hardest to break. And wait till people start getting it's, their it's energy hard. bills over the winter. They're going to get if hammered. If it gets cold, forget yeah. it. Game over. And you know, when it comes so to the Biden administration is going to be praying for COVID strain number six to distract the American people from the fact that a multi-point assault on the economy is happening. In the How bad do you think it's going to be? How bad do you think the Look, economy? J.P. Morgan came out yesterday morning and they said, you know what, our, our health care conference is going virtual. So let's try and multiply that out, right, when travel's coming back, do right? You, when, right, right when all the everything, in-person conferences, I mean, I've got, I've got them lined up. Through that's the, one of the biggest of the year, by the way. That's in San Francisco, I believe. It, it, is, it is now virtual. Could you imagine if people had access to these types of conversations a year ago, right before the election. Do you think it would have changed people's minds oh. knowing where the economy was going? Because a lot of people predicted this. This isn't something you don't, that's totally... You don't totally executive order the USDA into increasing the food stamp program by 32%. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is like, what's being done to the U.S. taxpayer quietly is, is just yeah. criminal. Yeah. And you just need more people to talk about it. And I'm telling you, 61 seats, a 61-seat swing come November is going to look like a walk in the park well, compared to the, what's going to happen the in, in, in the Senate already, and the House. The narrative's already shifted, you can tell, and it's a story later if we want to talk about it, but even how some of these liberal mayors are talking about crime right now, they're actually admitting that it exists, and you know that's a preemptive strike for the elections. But when it comes to inflation, I think sure. everybody has this but it's uh, true. aha moment, right, when you realize inflation is real. For me, it hit me the other day. I was at the grocery store. I bought two apples. I was going to buy two apples. Two apples. It was like four bucks. 
Four yeah. four fifty. I'm going for for two apples. Well, what's what's in the apple? <laughs> well, because Jackson had hidden some uh, marijuana in there. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I had I had to throw it over the wall at Guantanamo. <laughs> it's the secret special <laughs> apple. That was a bad apple. No <laughs> wonder you're in a good mood. It makes I sense. Got a good How about arms. them apples? I know, huh? man. Oh, I bought twelve oh, more. I bought twelve I like, more. I like these. The not only these is, apples. I like them apples. But, but David is in fuego this morning. But you know, I, I don't need those apples that bad. I <laughs> don't need apples right That's a ridiculous four yeah. or five bucks I didn't, for apples. I didn't buy the stupid For two pound, apples. I didn't buy the pound of bacon for yeah, 99 well, Somebody told me it was so 10 you, bucks for a bag you, of oranges. You have a problem with bacon. This guy's got a problem with apples. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. 